What's poppin' everybody? It's Sara. I know what you're thinking. You're like, you look absolutely fabulous. What on earth did you do? Spill the routine. How did you get like that? Well, I'm here to tell you the truth. It's eye glow long lashes serum. Here are my lashes before and here are my lashes today after six weeks of daily use. I mean, the pictures speak for themselves. My lashes touch my eyebrows. It's absolutely fantastic. It's kind of annoying sometimes because but you get used to the tickling feeling. I mean, I think that's a pretty good price for having. All I do is I apply one swipe on clean skin right above my lash line every day before I go to bed and watch them grow fast, honey. Faster than a flying tube in a hurricane, my friends. Faster than Leonardo DiCaprio will sign up for a wildlife protection convention. Even faster than an airy sun with a Virgo moon will jump to a conclusion. That's fast. I personally started seeing results after about two weeks of daily usage, but the longer I've used it, the stronger and longer my lashes have grown. So if you like what you're seeing and could use some help in the lash department, or if you want your already great lashes to look even longer, go ahead and check them out um, because with the code BLOOK, you can get 15% off the lash serum. I'm gonna put all the information in the description. I love this brand, I've worked with them before. They're great. Thank you so much iGlow for sponsoring this video. Now let's move on to K-pop. So this story, like many of my stories, takes us back to the magical year of 2014. Man, I really do talk in past tense a lot. That's how you know you truly fell off. Just kidding, I'm still on the horse, bareback. Best is yet to come. And by that I mean retirement. Okay, let's get on with the video. In 2014, I made a couple of YouTube videos that ended up going pretty viral at the time, and one of the videos was a video of me singing in a bunch of different musical genres. Some music industry people ended up seeing that video, which resulted in me signing a record deal with a major label in the US. I started off recording songs written by other people, and even though I enjoyed that, I felt like I had something to say too. I had also heard that, you know, being an artist is cool, but if you wanted to make a good living off of music, songwriting writing is where the money is at. I never particularly hated eating or having a roof on top of my head, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna start songwriting. I didn't want to write only for myself, but for others as well, you know, if I got good enough at it, so I started practicing. And I was in a very lucky situation because I had just been signed to this big time producer and I was put in songwriting sessions every day with literally the best in the game. Everyone I came in contact with taught me something, like all the engineers, the songwriters, the the other producers, the vocal coaches, and I was just like soaking in as much knowledge as possible. I was like a, a sponge. If you think about it, I'm still like a sponge. Got hella holes. I ended up booking one of my songwriting sessions with a producer who had K-pop connections. And uh, I had never listened to K-pop up until that point, but exploring something new sounded fun to me. And you know, the, the challenge loving Taurus I am, you know, I, I took on that challenge and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to make a K-pop song. And that's how we ended up making a song called You Think. After the song was finished, the demo was then sent to the Korean label that he worked with and they were like, we want to have this as the lead single for Girls' Generation. Girls' Generation. And like that, I ended up landing my first song placement as a songwriter for an other artist and they were so impressed with what we did that they invited me to go to Korea um, for a songwriting camp to write songs for other artists as well. So there I was, having freshly peed my pants, realizing that I now have songwriting credits uh, on a song for one of the biggest K-pop girl groups in the history of K-pop period. So they, um, they sent in the paperwork and passed around a split sheet. In a split sheet, everyone included in the making of the song agrees on you know percentages of the song for when royalties start coming in. This most typically goes so that the producer of the song or producers of the song get 50% of the song's revenue and the songwriters split the rest or songwriter if there was just one person writing the song. And of course there are other factors like, you know, publishing deals if you have to give a certain percentage to your publisher, etc. But yeah, that's the basic idea of it. I then got the flights in my email and next thing you know, I was on a direct 14 hour flight from Los Angeles to Seoul, South Korea. That flight was long. Long to the point where you start to lose grip of reality and you start to accept that this plane is never going to land and this is now your new home and everyone in it are your roommates. I was sat next to a grandmother who spoke to me in Korean the entire flight, even though I tried politely telling her I didn't understand a f***ing word she was saying, but she just kept talking to me in Korean, you know, showing me pictures of her travels and her visiting the Louis store, her husband's grave and you know, I just kept nodding and laughing at everything she said, just you know, hoping I didn't laugh at the wrong thing, you know? The person on my other side fell asleep before the plane had even taken off and didn't show signs of life until 14 hours later when we were landing. 
I was this close to actually checking his pulse, but I didn't have consent and I don't rock that way. So RIP my dude. Oh, I think I popped a silicone. How songwriting camps work is that they fly in a bunch of different songwriters and producers from all around the world, put them in a studio complex for a week or two and just let the magic happen. Not only has that been a great way for me to connect with other creatives, but to also make friends with people who are like-minded and share the same love for music as I do. I've actually met some of my very dearest, bestest friends through these songwriting camps with whom I'm still in contact on a daily basis. For these songwriting camps, the label usually provides us writers and producers with something called leads, where they list artists and what kind of songs they're looking for, and we work according to that. A lot of people are very curious about like, oh, so do you know Korean? Like, are you fluent in Korean? And no. So we go there, we write the songs in English, and if the song gets picked up, it gets translated by a Korean songwriter who oftentimes keeps the concept of the song and, you know, a bunch of the English words. Because if you know K-pop, you know that they love mixing English and Korean, so. At the end of the songwriting camp, we all sit in a room with a bunch of representatives of different K-pop groups and artists, and we listen through all the songs that were made. Um, during that songwriting camp and they make notes and they like ooh, I like that one Maybe that could work for him and him and them and those and then um, yeah These are called listening parties and they usually end up in us going to dinner afterwards and having an epic night out in the heart of Seoul and These are some of my favorite nights I've ever had. I freaking love Seoul. Seoul is one of my favorite cities of all time it's so cute that every single day we pull up at the studios, there's always a group of fans camping right outside of the music label, you know, holding gifts and signs and just hoping to get a quick glimpse of their favorite K-pop bias. And they're always so disappointed to see me. I've also been taken to meet artists and groups and um, I've seen them practice and to see these like ridiculously talented and world famous people just like do what they do best, it's truly makes an impression like no other. To name drop a few artists and groups that I've had songs with, we have uh, Red Velvet, Shiny, Girls' Generation, NCTU, NCT Dream, Taeyeon, Boa, Taemin, and a few others that I can't think of right now. So before filming this video, I asked on my Instagram stories uh, for you guys to send me questions related to K-pop and my experience in that. So I'm gonna be going through some of those now. Is there any difference in demand of topics used in songs? So I think it's starting to become less old fashioned, but they likely won't take a song if it has a lot of profanity in it or if it's very sexually explicit, which can be a challenge because I sure love writing about this. What is the coolest thing about writing K-pop? Um, so for me, it's definitely seeing my little studio demo, my baby, grow into this massive production with like crazy visuals and top of the line choreography. Nothing like what I just did. <laughs> What's your favorite song you've worked on and why? So I would say Seventh Sense by NCTU because I love writing raps and that's something I don't really, you know, do in my own project. And I think it's crucial as a songwriter to regularly step out of your comfort zone and learn new ways to write and learn new things and styles and because you always want to become better than you were the day before and yeah, so 7th Sense by NCTU. What did you do before songwriting? Um, I graduated chef school in 2013, but I worked as a cashier for our family business, which is a uh, chain of grocery stores in Finland. And honestly, I love that shit and I would still do it, so yeah, that's what I did before. But I, I much prefer songwriting, so I'm, I'm good for now, thanks. Who is your favorite K-pop artist? That would have to be Golden, uh, formerly known as G-Soul, simply because of his fire vocals. Oh, he's so good, and I'm so proud to have worked with him in the studio. He is amazing. How is writing K-pop different than writing other music? Well, I like that K-pop can be very bold and experimental, and they often, you know, do these interesting like chord choices or notes that you don't hear as often in Western music and it just gives you more room to create um, and just picks at your brain and that's why it's a little different and that's why I like it. Favorite note to sing? Oh. What inspired you to write for others? So when I write for myself, I like to write about things that actually happen in my own life or at least take inspiration from that. Um, and living a life as boring as mine, you know, sometimes I fall short on subjects, but writing for others, I get to make up this whole story and really just use my imagination and that's what makes it extra fun. 
Do you feel jealous when the Korean version slaps harder than the English demo? <laughs> Not at all. That's the best, honestly, when you get to be like, damn, they really brought that song to life. They did their thing. And I mean, that's, that's only positive, so yeah. Have you learned a little Korean in the process? Mm, no, I've I've picked up on you know some words that you know you often hear in K-pop, much like you hear the same words in English sung music. But you know I know some phrases, but I want to be conversational at some point. But that would just require time and effort and motivation to sit down and really start from scratch to learn like the alphabet and stuff. Um, but yeah, in the future for sure I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna learn me some Korean. That'd be cool. I love the language. I think it sounds beautiful. So, as a bottom line, for anyone who dreams of becoming a songwriter, I can only say, practice, write a lot, expand your vocabulary, display your talent, um, put up videos, send demos to labels and A&Rs, and if you truly got what it takes, your talent will not go unnoticed because everyone loves a hit record. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting or maybe you learned something new, perhaps. Um, and make sure you follow me on Instagram at Hello I'm Sara. And uh, I would like to thank iGlow for sponsoring this video. Again, if you want to check out the Balm Lash Serum, the, um, the details are in the description. So go there and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.